Well, hi, uh, my name's Adrian Warnock, and I'm here with Ed Stetzer. So, um, Ed, thanks for joining us, first of all. Thank you so much. It's, it's great to meet you. I've uh, been a great enjoyer of your blog, and uh, good to meet you in person, or at least via video in person. Yeah, it's great. And we literally haven't spoken before for more than a few seconds, have we, in a couple of emails. So, it's one of the things I always want to do is try and pick the brains of other people like yourself. And certainly, if I read your biography, it sounds like you're... You know, you've got quite a quite an impressive resume there, uh, Ed. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, uh, you're very gracious. I, I, I don't know about that, but uh, but I would say I, I I love the blog. If there's uh, you know, if you measure leadership by influence, uh, your blog, several others. Now, I did confuse you once with uh, with uh, who did I confuse you with? Uh, David Wayne. Uh, didn't you guys have that people confusing you all the time? And so I confused you once with him. And he did correct me, um, but, yeah. uh, but just pre very, very insightful interviews, very insightful uh, dialogue that you do. So glad wow. to be here. Thank you. Well, you know, like I say, one of the one of the things that I think people enjoy perhaps the most that I do is is trying to, uh, you know, pick the brains of other people. And uh, unfortunately, uh, as you discovered after you agreed to doing this, I am actually a psychiatrist. So you want to be a little bit careful here. Uh, because you know my career right. was, I'll be my best behavior. my career was all about <laughs> trying to get people to set themselves at their ease and uh, sit back relax and tell me their deep darkest secrets so you know if if we have to press well, pause I'm ready. I'm ready yeah your assumption may be you know I may have been to a lot of psychiatrists so your assumption may be I'm unprepared so let's go ahead I'm ready let's jump in <laughs> Excellent. But I also hear you've done quite a few interviews as well. I know, for example, you interviewed Mark Dever, didn't you? And uh, that's always a challenge, isn't it? I did. Well, Mark and I were at a conference called the Whiteboard Sessions. And, um, you know, to be honest, I, 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 um, I speak with Mark in some settings. We, we've spoken some, at some conferences. We've taught together. And I speak at a lot of uh, contemporary church conferences. And so it was just unusual to have Mark at that conference, I kind of told Mark it was like it's like it's like your wedding. You have your parents' friends, you have your church friends, you have your school friends. I never really met, and so Mark's a friend, and many of those pastors there were friends. And I just I was interested to see how they get along, and um, and I thought and Mark is always so gracious, and um, and he did a great job in the interview. We talked about his his talk at together for the gospel and talked about the issues of the gospel and the kingdom, and I guess it's gotten a lot of play. I think almost four thousand people now have have downloaded. I think it's about. Uh, five times more than any of the interviews, but we had a, we had a good conversation and and uh, we have a relationship beforehand on these issues that enable us to talk them through. Excellent. All right, now before we really get stuck in, I just want to make one point on a slightly humorous note, and that's this: we are only able to do this really because of Max, aren't we? Let's be honest. This quality of video that we've got here, you could not get currently on a PC, I don't think, could you? Oh, uh, I you know. I will tell you that I am impressed. Having having been one who has resisted the Mac revolution, it's becoming increasingly difficult with tools like this. So perhaps I am being weaned off my Mac, on my PC and brought to the dark side, but so I'm not quite there yet. You're not quite there. Yeah, it's just interesting actually because I mean people, you know, missiology has got this kind of hip, kind of cool, trendy designer type feel to it, and you kind of I I, I saw you as a Mac person, Ed, and I discovered that you're not, or at least not yet. No, well, you know, I'm countercultural for the gospel, and okay. so I'm kind of being countercultural on this on this Mac PC issue. And I just figured, you know, to me, I remember all of you Mac type people in the in the 80s and the 90s with the VHS Beta Wars, and you'd always say, well, Beta's better, Beta's better, and and, and you know, then I always say it's got four heads on it rather than two, and now there's no Beta left, and so I'm just not sure I want to jump and buy a beta machine when VHS is still working so well. Ah, yeah, 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 but is it working well? That's the first question. That's How many times question. a day have you had to reboot your computer? You know what I'm saying? So did you have questions about psychiatry? Yeah, or yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> but, but, but the other thing as well, I think the one thing that will cl clinch it for you is you can actually use a Mac as a Windows machine. So there you go, you can dual boot it. Really? Or you can even I do what I do, it. which is I actually boot it up. I have this... Um, program that allows me to boot Windows within the Mac environment. So and I only oh. use that really for the Logos Bible software because they are they have got a beta out for Mac, but only a beta. So that's the one thing that I mean that's the thing that stopped me. I've actually been a PC user until quite recently. Uh, but it, and the Logos was the one thing that stopped me from making the jump. But uh, um, when I heard about Parallels, I thought, oh, let's give it a go. And, and so far, we've now got three Macs in our family, I'm afraid, because wow. my kids keep fighting for it and stuff like this. It's a nightmare. You know, that's when we were PCs, good, we would be like trying to encourage them to use it, but now it's like we can't get them off. But anyway, you are you are a Mac evangelist. 
I am indeed. But you, um, what is this mission thing, first of all? Because some people just think it means being hip and trendy. And by the way, I should just point out, John Piper has a Mac. No, oh, that's true. That's true. A good so point. He's Not more trendy than you, but... but... But he has a Mac. He, he can't get a TV, but he can get a Mac. Yeah. Uh, you know, the... <laughs> what is, the, what the is this missiology thing? thing? What is it? I mean, what's it about? Because there'll be some people watching this who may not even really know what it is. Uh, they might have some idea that it's vaguely linked to emerging stuff and, you know, may, maybe seeker-sensitive. Or, what is it, you know? Well, let's, let's define some terms. Missiology, which is a specific question you asked, is the study, the discipline of understanding missions. And so it, it, it really encompasses a lot of areas like, um, like uh, cross-cultural understanding, like anthropology, um, this is something that, that has developed as a discipline over the centuries, more specifically as an academic discipline at the beginning of the last century. But people have asked the questions, if we're going to take the gospel and communicate it well, uh, how do we uh, maybe deconstruct some cultural uh, trappings of the gospel so that we communicate the gospel, the, the, the didache and the kerygma of, that needs to be communicated, not the cultural trappings. We don't need to teach people in, in, uh, in East Asia, Western hymnody, we need to teach them the gospel. And so, so missiology helps us with that discipline. Uh, missional is a term that's, that's you know, also quite the rage and, and is used in different settings. Uh, you mentioned emerging church settings, but really, I mean, most denominations now are talking about that, many evangelicals, uh, Tim Keller, others. Um, uh, Mark Dever and I talked a little bit about it as well. Uh, you know, missional, the idea of being missional, it, it, its root takes some ideas from missiology, but it's really built on the mission of God, acting and thinking like missionaries focused on the mission of God uh, for the God's agenda. It, it really is a, is a re-emphasis on the fact that we are sent by God. Now, God himself, by, by his nature, is a sender. He is, to quote Francis DeBose's book, he is God who sends. And so when we are like God, we reflect his character, and we are both sent and the sender. We, we continue to, to push towards proclaiming the good news, the name and fame of Jesus, among those people who are far from him. So it's, missional is, is a similar word to missio, missiology, but different. My, my PhD is in missiology, and that's, I mean, it's a classical discipline. You know, I, I, I say history and anthropology and all those things, but missional is more of a, uh, of a posture and approach to ministry.